An object moves along the x-axis such that at any given time its position is given by this equation, this position time equation, x equals 3t cubed minus 14t plus 6, where t is in seconds and x is in meters. And there are several questions that we're going to answer about this object. We're going to determine equations for velocity and acceleration at any given time t. We're going to sketch graphs of the velocity and acceleration as a function of time, calculate the velocity and acceleration at a particular moment in time, uh, and then answer more questions about uh, which direction the object is moving, the object's displacement, and its average velocity between a couple of different times. Part A asks for us to determine equations for velocity and acceleration as a function of time. So we'll start by writing down the position time equation that was given to us in the problem statement. And that was 3t cubed minus 14t plus 6. And to find first the velocity time equation, we would take the derivative of that position time equation that was given to us. This could also be written as ddt of 3t cubed minus 14t plus 6. And so we'll, we'll handle each term separately. We'll take the derivative of each term one at a time. So for the first term, we would take the coefficient and the exponent, and we would multiply those two together. 3 times 3 gives me 9 t, and I subtract 1 from the exponent. So 3 minus 1 gives me 2. For the second term, I'll keep the minus sign out in front. The exponent that t is raised to is 1. So 14 times 1 means the coefficient stays as 14. And then t to the 1 minus 1 is t to the 0, and anything to the 0 is just equal to 1. So we'll just have 14 for the second term. And the last term is just a constant, 6, and so when I take the derivative of a constant, it goes away. And so the velocity equation, the velocity equation as a function of time, is 9t squared minus 14. And moving forward, whether we're making the graphs in part b or some of the other uh, questions that will follow, we'll need these equations for position for velocity, and now for acceleration. So the acceleration time equation would be the second derivative of the position function, or the derivative of the equation that we just determined, the velocity time equation. So dv dt, which could be written as d dt of the equation we just found, which is 9t squared minus 14. And again now, uh, we'll see that 9 times 2 is 18 for the coefficient of the first term, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so the exponent will just be 1, so we'll get 18t for the first term. The second term is a constant, and once again it'll drop out when I take the derivative of that. And so our acceleration uh, time equation is quite simply, so at is just 18t, so the acceleration does change with time. And so now I have my position, velocity, and acceleration time equations, which will be used in the subsequent parts here. And now I'd like to move on to part B, which asks us to sketch graphs of velocity and acceleration as a function of time. So I could start by just labeling the axes, VT and AT. These are the two graphs that I need to make. And for the velocity time graph, I should use the equation for the velocity as a function of time. So v equals 9t squared minus 14. And the first thing that I always like to do is to determine where to start. And I can determine that by plugging in t equals 0. So at a time of 0, what will the velocity be? So v equals 9 times 0 squared minus 14. And hopefully you can see that the first term is going to be 0 and therefore the velocity is going to start off as being negative. And we know what the actual value is too, it's minus 14. So my graph should start at minus 14, and then from there will change because the velocity depends on time. 
I know that at some point the velocity is going to become zero because this first term is eventually going to be greater than the second term. So at some point, uh, those two terms will be equal. At some moment in time, the velocity will be zero. And so I can determine where the velocity is going to be zero by plugging in zero for the velocity and solving for time. So 9 t squared minus 14. So the time where the velocity will become zero will be the square root of 14 divided by 9. And that happens to be about 1.25 seconds. And so what that means is there's going to be a moment in time, and this really is a sketch for a graph. It's not supposed to be uh, very uh, quantitative here, but I am adding some numbers. So at a time of about 1.25 seconds, that's when the velocity should become zero. Initially, the velocity is negative, and after that, the velocity is going to become positive. And so when the velocity becomes goes from being negative to zero and then becomes positive, that indicates a change in direction. I also know that because of the form of the equation, there's a positive 9 uh, in front of the t squared term, and so this is going to be a parabola that opens upwards. And I know the velocity is going to be uh, come more and more positive as time goes on because of the two terms in the equation. And so this parabola should look something like this. It should start at minus 14, it should become zero at about 1.25 seconds, and then should just increase from there. Something like that. And again, the velocity initially was negative, it became zero at this point where it crosses the time axis, and then is positive at all moments in time after that. And the sign of the velocity tells me the direction in which the object is moving. If the velocity is negative, it's moving in the negative direction. And if the velocity is positive, the object is moving in the positive direction. So although it doesn't really look like it, when I graph velocity as a function of time, when the object crosses the time axis, it's changing direction. And now I should look at the acceleration versus time graph. The equation for the acceleration, a equals 18t, tells me that the acceleration does depend on time, but there's a linear dependence. In fact, if you match this up to the equation y equals mx plus b, you'll notice that there is no plus anything in our top equation. In fact, we can uh, say that the intercept will be 0 because there's no plus a constant there. And so, for that reason, our graph should start off at 0, our acceleration at t equals 0 will be 0, and from there it should in increase linearly. And the slope of the graph that I make should be equal to 18. So you can just draw a straight line like this, and the slope of that graph should be 18. So in general, Given any one of uh, these functions, you should be able to look at the function and determine what the shape of the graph should look like for that object's motion. Part C asks to calculate the velocity and acceleration at a particular moment in time, t equals 4. And so we should look back to part A and grab those equations that we determined for the velocity and the acceleration. So the equation for the velocity, v, at a particular moment in time, t, was 9t squared minus 14. And so the moment in time that they're asking about is 4. So if we want to know the velocity at 4 seconds, we simply plug in 4 for time. And so 4 squared is 16, and then we would need to multiply by 9, and then subtract 14. And the value for the velocity that I get at t equals 4 is about 130 meters per second. Again, in the problem statement, it said that um, positions were measured in meters and time was measured in seconds. And so given those units, the velocity would be measured in meters per second. So the velocity at t equals 4 is 130 meters per second. And now the acceleration, which has an equation of 18t,
So AT equals 18T. I would simply multiply 18 by 4, which gives me an acceleration at T equals 4 of 72. And remember, acceleration is velocity divided by time, or a change in velocity with time. And so the units of acceleration are meters per second per second, which is meters per second squared. So the acceleration is 72 meters per second squared. So to calculate the velocity or acceleration at a particular moment in time, first determine the acceleration and velocity equations, and then plug in that specific uh, moment in time that you need to find the velocity for. Part D asks, in which direction is the object moving at t equals 4 seconds? This is a pretty quick problem. I mentioned before that the velocity at a particular moment in time tells you the direction that it's traveling in. And so if this object has a positive velocity at the moment of time in question, then the object is moving in the positive direction. And remember, since this object is restricted to moving along the x-axis, you can think of this object maybe as just moving along a straight line, where uh, this is the positive x-direction maybe. And so the, the object has you know, two options. It can either be moving in the positive x-direction or it can be moving in the minus x or negative x direction. And so if I take my velocity equation at any particular moment in time and check to see whether it's positive or negative, I can determine the direction that the object is moving in. So up above, we found that the velocity at t equals 4 was a positive 130 meters per second. Therefore, the object is moving in the positive direction. and we should state the positive x direction. And clearly that's not always the case, right? If you think back to the velocity time graph, uh, there was a time when the object was stopped at, at about 1.25 seconds. There was a time when the object was moving in the negative x direction, but at any moment in time beyond 1.25 seconds, the object is going to be uh, moving in the positive x direction and speeding up. Part E asks us to calculate the object's displacement between t equals 1 and t equals 4. And so I'll remind you that if we're asked to find the displacement of an object, that is typically symbolized with delta x, which is a vector, and it is the distance between the object's initial and final positions. And we find that by finding the final position and subtracting the initial position. And so uh, we also should remember that displacement is a vector, so it points in a particular direction. Since this object is restricted to moving in one dimension, if the displacement we find is positive, then the displacement is in the positive x direction. And if it's negative, then it would be pointed in the negative x direction. So first what we need to do is we need to take our position time equation, which is x equals 3t cubed minus 14t plus 6. And we need to determine the position of the object at t equals 4 and at t equals 1 so we can subtract. So I'll start by finding the position at t equals 4. So this would be 3 uh, times 4 cubed minus 14 times 4 plus 6. So the position at 4, if you carry out that arithmetic, 4 cubed times 3 uh, is 192. 14 times 4 is 56. And the last term does not depend on t, it's just 6. So the position at t equals 4 is 142. And that would be a position in meters. And now let's find the position at t equals 1. So that would be 3 times 1 cubed minus 14 times 1 plus 6. So the position at 1 would be equal to 3 
minus 14 plus 6, which is equal to minus 5. And so let's imagine this uh, for a moment. This object is restricted to moving along the x-axis. So here's the x-axis, and I've indicated the positive x direction. And so at t equals 1, so at t equals 1, the object is here at a position of minus 5. And so the 0 position, which lies somewhere along this x-axis here, is going to be somewhere maybe like right here. So this is a 0 position. And then at t equals 4, and this isn't drawn to scale, but at t equals 4, the object is somewhere way to the right at a position of 142. And so in order to find the object's displacement, delta x, between those two times, we would take the final position, which is 142, and subtract the initial position, which is minus 5. We need to be careful with the minus sign. So minus a negative means that the displacement will be 147 meters. And that number is positive, which helps me understand that the displacement between those two times is in the positive x direction. And that makes sense, right? Here is the initial position, and here's the final position. And so the displacement vector, right, so this is xf, and this is xi. So the displacement vector starts at xi and points toward xf, like this. And so the magnitude of that vector would be the length, or the 147 that we just calculated in meters. And the direction is indicated by the positive sign in front of this uh, displacement. And so you don't have to put a positive sign there, uh, but the fact that the number is positive indicates that that arrow points to the right. The displacement is to the right or in the positive x direction. In the last part, Part F says to calculate the object's average velocity between t equals 1 and t equals 4. That's the same time interval that we were just asked about in part E. And so you should remember that the average velocity is delta x over delta t. And the displacement that we just found of 147 meters will go in the numerator. And the denominator would be the amount of time that it took for the object to travel those 147 meters. And so uh, that would be 4 minus 1. Delta t is a time interval, the final time minus the initial time. So 4 minus 1 would be 3. And 147 divided by 3 works out to be about 49 meters per second for the average velocity. And so hopefully what this problem illustrates is that for an object moving in uh, one dimension, given uh, just one piece of information, the object's position, time, equation, I can find the other two equations. I can make graphs of the object's uh, velocity, acceleration, or position. And I can answer just about every question about this object's motion just by having that position, time, equation.